Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry and more. Today we have a very important chapter in health sector that is sterilization and disinfection. This is a very fundamental uh, concept every health healthcare person, let it be a doctor, dentist, pharmacist or a nurse, whoever it is, they should be very well versed with the concepts of sterilization and disinfection because uh, if any faults which is happening from healthcare people is very detrimental to the patients and to the society. So let's learn about the various procedures in sterilization and disinfection. So by definition, Sterilization is a process by which an article, surface or medium is freed of all living microorganisms either in vegetative or spore state. Okay, so vegetative and spores. The spores are very difficult to be killed or very difficult to be destroyed because um, it needs to be at a very high temperature or at a very high concentration of the reagent for this supposed to be killed okay so sterilization is a process where the vegetative forms and spores are killed so it is almost completely germ free so disinfection disinfection is a different procedure that is the destruction or removal of all pathogenic organisms or organism capable of giving rise to infection so disinfection is killing of pathogens but sterilization is killing all the living organism or most of the living organisms this is killing only pathogens okay pathogens are organism capable of creating an infection so one more terminology we need to learn that is antisepsis antisepsis is nothing but prevention of infection usually by inhibiting the growth of bacteria in wounds or tissues so various antiseptics uh, creams uh, solutions we no, so these are preventing infection in wounds. So already if there is an injury, so we need to apply antiseptic to prevent the infection Okay, by inhibiting the growth of bacteria. So sterilization is killing all the uh, microorganisms, disinfection killing just the pathogens and antiseptic is inhibiting the growth of bacteria and preventing the infection. Okay. So that is about sterilization, infection, just the introduction, introduction part. So we learned about uh, sterilization uh, and disinfection and about antiseptic solutions. Now we have classification of uh, methods in sterilization and disinfection. So it is broadly classified into physical and chemical methods in physical uh, there is sunlight drying dry heat moist heat filtration radiation ultrasonic and sonic vibration in chemical methods alcohols aldehydes dyes halogens phenols surface active agents metallic salts and gases so let's learn one by one so in physical agents uh, the sunlight mm, it is active germicidal effect due to the combined effect of UV and heat rays. So there is ultraviolet and heat rays uh, which is commonly uh, um, clearing the tanks, uh, rivers, uh, lakes. So all these waters are clear, killing the microbes by this method or it is a natural way of uh, disinfection. The microbes will be uh, removed by UV rays and heat rays and drying drying is another method where the bacterial cell the four fifth of bacterial cell is having water so when there is uh, drying it kills the bacteria by removing all the water content from the bacterial body so that is the importance of drying and sunlight by uv rays and heat rays and incineration we have heard uh, incineration procedure uh, it is a method of uh, waste disposal the single chamber double chamber incinerator mostly uh, associated with hospital waste management 
so it is rapidly destroying materials uh, such as bleeding animal uh, waste pathological material and all these are used in incineration okay all these are physical methods so it is not exactly a method of disinfection it is a uh, waste disposal method so let's learn about dry heat okay dry heat the principle is protein degen denaturation okay protein denaturation is a principle of dry heat that is uh, oxidative damage so there will be oxidative damage happens in dry heat so in dry heat uh, there will be uh, toxic effects of elevated levels of electrolytes so the most common one is hot air oven so hot air oven is working in principle of dry heat hot air oven which is working in principle of dry heat it is a very widely used one and it works at a temperature of 160 degrees celsius uh, or 320 uh, fahrenheit for one to two hours okay so this is dry heat principle working on protein denaturation and oxidative damage most commonly it is used in glassware like uh, glass syringes petri dishes flask pipettes test tubes surgical instruments like scalpel scissors forceps and chemicals uh, such as liquid paraffin fats uh, sulfonamide mm, dusting powder etc all these uh, can be uh, used in dry heat uh, method okay so it is hot air oven 160 degree celsius for one to two hours so what are the precautions we need to take care in hot air oven that is it should not be overloaded it should be fitted with uh, fans uh, for even distribution of hot air materials to be sterilized should be perfectly dry rubber materials uh, will not withstand the temperature so we should take care of uh, rubber material we should not keep rubber material in hot air oven uh, except silicone rubber which can withstand this high temperature and after the procedure we need to allow it to cool for two hours before opening the door so the advantages are it is very economical does not rust metals uh, like uh, moist heat it is easily monitored used for anhydrous oils and powder but the disadvantage is hot air is a bad conductor of heat hence it has less penetrating power okay less penetrating power less penetrating power means it might not kill the spores okay so that is about uh, moist uh, sorry dry heat and hot air oven now we have uh, moist heat moist heat principle that is most commonly used one is pasteurization okay you must have heard about pasteurization it is principle used in milk preservation so pasteurization you we have two methods that is one is holder method and flash process holder method and flash process so holder method is 63 degrees celsius for 30 minutes 63 degrees celsius for 30 minutes whereas the flash process is 72 de 72 degrees celsius for 20 seconds not minutes it is 20 seconds then rapid cooling to 13 degree okay then rapidly cooling to 13 degree so this is holder method this is flash process holder method 63 degree celsius for 30 minute and flash process 72 degree celsius for 20 seconds and then rapidly cool to 13 degree celsius so that is pasteurization process it is coming under moist heat now we have boiling boiling we all of us know what is boiling we use boiled water we remove all the pathogens from drinking water by boiling principle so temperature we know it is 92 boiling it is coming under moist heat 90 to 100 degrees celsius for 10 minutes so 10 minutes boiling of water at 100 degrees celsius will kill most of the bacteria and spores so uh, but uh, some of the spores will not be killed that requires a very prolonged period of uh, boiling 
uh, and we can accelerate or we can uh, promote the sterilization procedure by adding 2 percentage of sodium bicarbonate okay so if we add sodium bicarbonate to boiling water the procedure will be good uh, compared to uh, normal boiling so that is boiling okay so in uh, wet sterilization or moist heat sterilization we learned pasteurization and boiling now we have tantalization okay tantalization or intermittent sterilization or intermittent sterilization so this is used for media containing sugar or gelatin exposure of 100 degrees for 20 minutes 100 degrees for 20 minutes okay this is tantalization 100 degrees for 20 minutes on three successive days three successive days that is tantalization so 20 minutes 100 degrees celsius for three successive days first exposure will kill all vegetative bacteria then subsequent exposure will kill the spores okay so vegetative bacteria and spores are there so our aim in sterilization is to kill the uh, spores so the first day will kill vegetative bacteria they are easily uh, uh, destroyable whereas the spores are difficult to uh, be destroyed so uh, the successive days will kill the spores so that is moist heat now we have the very important uh, sterilization method which is using this moist heat so very popular very common one is autoclave so all of you must be knowing autoclave you must have seen this uh, in your clinics in your college wherever you are working uh, in a health sector autoclave will be there for sterilization so autoclave uh, is working under moist heat principle thing is when boiling water is insufficient to kill spores and viruses so boiling water needs very prolonged period to kill all of the spores and when water boils uh, its vapor pressure equals to that of the surrounding atmosphere so if you are boiling the same water in a closed vessel what happens the pressure will increase right so the pressure will increase so when pressure increases what happens the temperature at which water boils also increases then this saturated steam has more penetrating power so more penetrating power means more spores will be killed so the same principle of boiling water but under a closed vessel so there will be more penetrating power of this saturated steam so when the steam comes in contact with a cooler surface it condenses to water and gives up latent heat to that surface okay so that is a principle of autoclave that is boiling water in a closed vessel to increase the pressure so most commonly we know we have three major factors for affecting autoclave that is pressure pressure temperature and time okay so these three factors we should learn in autoclave so higher temperature and higher pressure requires shorter time so we have three this is pressure temperature and time okay so if the pressure that is atmospheric pressure is 15 the temperature we need 121 degree and if the pressure is 20 psi then the temperature requires is 126 and if the pressure is again 20 136 if the if we increase the pressure the time reduces that is 15 pressure and 121 temperature requires 15 minutes of working time whereas 20 pressure and 126 degree temperature requires just 10 minutes and 20 pressure and 136 degree requires just three minutes okay so when pressure increases time decreases so these are the three things we need to understand in autoclave 
ओके सो टू क्लेव फिफ्टीन साइड ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन ट्वेंटी वन वन ट्वेंटी सिक्स वन थर्टी सिक्स दिस इज टेम्परेचर एंड दिस इज टाइम सो हायर प्रेशर लेस टेम्परेचर सो वॉट आर द कंसिडरेशन वॉट वी नीड टू थिंक अबाउट ऑटो क्लेविंग बिकॉज देर आर लॉट्स ऑफ थिंग टू बी कीप इन माइंड वाइल डूइंग ऑटो क्लेविंग बिकॉज वी शुड एंश्योर कंप्लीट एयर रिमूवल फॉर टेम्परेचर टू रीच वन ट्वेंटी डिग्री वन वन ट्वेंटी वन डिग्री सेल्शियस एंड एंश्योर लूज पैकिंग ऑफ द चैम्बर एंड टाइटली सील्ड मेटीरियल्स मे बिकम डेंचरसली प्रेशराइज कॉजिंग इंचुरी वन रिमोट it can be used for uh, disposable syringes and uh, glass vases metal instruments it's very commonly used in all the hospitals dental clinics and every healthcare facility will be having one or two uh, autoclaves and also can be used for surgical instruments laboratory equipments culture media pharmaceutical products the advantage of autoclave is advantage is it is very economical good penetration power short cycle time easily monitorable uh, monitored and no special chemicals or exhaust required the disadvantage is moisture okay moisture retention since it is moist heat moisture retention is a big problem which causes corrosion right which causes corrosion and carbon steels will be damaged dulling of unprotected cutting edges and destruction of heat sensitive materials all these are the disadvantage of autoclave but still autoclave is a very commonly used or most commonly used sterilizing equipment in health sector so we can just compare the dry heat and moist heat so if it is dry heat dry heat it was uh, one if it is 160 degree celsius we need 45 minutes if it is 170 degree celsius we need 18 minutes and if it is 180 degree celsius we need 7.5 minutes whereas in uh, moist heat that is autoclave if it is 121 we need 40 uh, sorry 15 minutes we just need 15 minutes it is very very lesser and uh 126 we need just 10 minutes and 134 degree we need 3 minutes that is a difference from dry heat and moist heat okay this is moist heat requires very shorter duration 15 10 or 3 minutes this is almost half an hour or more than half an hour and the temperature also very less you can compare the dry heat and moist heat so that is advantage of moist heat uh, with respect to dry heat so the next one uh, we have a uh, glass bead sterilizer okay glass bead sterilizer we all must have seen in dental clinics and uh, mostly in uh, endodontic departments where the files are cleaned with this uh, particular sterilizer that is uh, a small equipment which has a uh, small glass beads uh, which works at high temperature that is 210 degree and 230 degree for 10 to 30 seconds okay the glass bead sterilizer mainly used to uh, sterilize the files endodontic files uh, and the burrs burrs we you know uh, the cutting burrs so it is most commonly seen in department endodontic department so where this is mostly used cutting burrs and files okay so disadvantage is uh, we cannot mm, maintain a uniform heat all the areas so glass bead sterilizer the temperature is 210 degree to 230 degree and 10 to 30 seconds uses are files and cutting burrs and Uh, disadvantage is maintaining a uniform heat throughout the area is difficult so that is glass bead sterilizer it is another method of uh, sterilization and uh, next one is filtration so there are many filters uh, you know, such as uh, candle filter candle filter and asbestos filter so many filters are available asbestos filter and sintered glass filter 
center glass filter so all these uh, are also can be used for uh, sterilization of equipments but it is not very commonly used the filters whereas radiation radiation is commonly used uh, we have two types of radiation that is non ionizing radiation and ionizing radiation right two types non ionizing and ionizing ionizing is uh, bad for health non ionizing is not very uh, injurious like uh, uv lights another one which is daily we exposed to non ionizing radiation from the sunlight ionizing which is uh, detrimental to health such as uh, which is seen in x ray production so non ionizing radi radiation which uses longer wavelength and lower energy hence uh, it loses the ability to penetrate substances and can only be used for sterilizing the surfaces like infrared radiation infrared radiation which is used for rapid mass sterilization of prepacked items such as syringes catheters and also uv radiation uh, which is used for disinfecting uh, enclosed areas like operation theaters and operation theater and uh, the laboratories so uv radiation can be used which is uh, high wavelength low energy whereas ionizing radiation ionizing radiation uses shorter wavelength high intensity radiation with high penetrating power to destroy microorganism this radiation can come in form of gamma rays or x rays which uh, react with the dna resulting in damage of the uh, microbes since there is no appreciable increase in temperature it is also known as cold sterilization it is very important commonly asked question cold sterilization because there is no increasing in temperature we are using just gamma rays or x-rays so which is known as cold sterilization which is used for uh, sterilizing plastic swabs metal foils etc so that is non-ionizing and ionizing this is infrared and uv lights this is gamma radiation and x-rays okay so ionizing uh, radiation method is also known as cold sterilization uh, now we have uh, the last one which is ultrasonic and sonic vibration ultrasonic uh, cleaning which is more effective uh, than manual cleaning it removes uh, dried serum whole blood plaque uh, zinc phosphate and polycarboxylate cements from the instrument or metal surfaces and even from dentures it minimizes the handling uh, contaminated handling of contaminated instruments so during cleaning uh, we need to submerge the instruments in ultrasonic solution for 2 to 20 minutes so these solutions will be available in all the departments so the instruments will be submerged in ultrasonic solution and uh, this solution should be changed at least once a day okay that is about ultrasonic and sonic vibration now we have a few uh, biological controls for different sterilization methods because we need to uh, ensure that the our sterilization instruments working properly our method is correct uh, we cannot depend on a uh, instruments efficiency uh, for a very long period we need to monitor it intermittently so for monitoring we have biological control for hot air oven hot air oven uh, the biological control is checking the presence of uh, clostridium tetany so if clostridium tetany is present that means the hot air oven, ho oven is not working properly and autoclave it is bacillus uh, group of bacteria and filtration is uh, different pseudo uh, monas uh, diminuta and ionizing radiation also bacillus pumilis so all these biological controls we need to use to uh, check the efficiency of all the methods or the instruments or if it is working properly or not now let's move on to the chemical agents so chemical agents are broadly classified into uh, liquid agents and uh, gases 
so liquids we have various alcohols aldehydes phenols halogens heavy metals service active agents and dyes in gases formaldehyde uh, ethylene oxide and plasma so what is the basic action of chemical agents it is by protein coagulation uh, disruption of cell membrane removal of the free sulfide trail groups and substrate competition okay so main is protein coagulation so whereas in uh, we have seen protein denaturation in our dry heat methods this is protein coagulation and cell membrane disruption cell membrane it will disrupt cell membrane and the sulfide rail groups it removes the sulfide rail groups that's how these chemical agents are uh, creating a free microbes surface or free of the microbes so alcohols so what is the action of alcohols so it is by the denaturation of proteins most commonly used isopropyl alcohol this is very common nowadays in corona time this is isopropyl alcohol everyone is using it everyone is rubbing it uh, with the hands so they are sanitizing it is used as a sanitizer the common hand rub which is isopropyl alcohol this is 70 percentage ethyl alcohol is another one and methyl alcohol is uh, active agent against the fungal spores and used to treat uh, cabinets and incubators are cleared by using methyl alcohol okay so isopropyl alcohol and 70% ethyl alcohol used as surface or skin disinfectant okay skin disinfectant this is not uh, working on sterilization principle this is working on disinfection okay hope you remember the definition of disinfection it is uh, killing only the pathogenic organism so isopropyl alcohol and 70% ethyl alcohol surface or skin disinfectant whereas methyl alcohol is used to uh, is used to uh, clean or disinfect uh, the cabinets and incubators okay so suitable for skin preparation before the vein puncture so before uh, inserting needle into veins we can apply all these so disadvantage is it is inflammable the mucous membrane uh, irritation is a problem and it promotes resting okay when we apply it on the metal there will be resting of the metallic parts so those are the problems of these alcohols they are inflammable metal resting is there and mucous membrane irritant now we have aldehydes aldehydes uh, formaldehyde is a common one formaldehyde which is also known as formalin so in aqueous solution it acts as a bactericidal and sporicidal bactericidal means agent which kills bacteria sporicidal means it kills spores bacteriostatic is different bacteriocidals bacteriostatic it reduces or it suppresses the bacterial action whereas bacteriocidal bacteriocidal cidal means it kills the bacteria static is different it suppresses its action okay so bacteriostatic is different bacteriocidal is different so this is bacteriocidal and sporicidal that is aldehyde commonly used for malin it is active against gram negative bacteria spores viruses and fungi in aqueous solution that is formalin 37 percentage is used in aqueous solution and 10 percentage formalin and uh, 0.5 percentage sodium tetraborate used to clean metal instruments like endoscope dialysis and equipments all these are used by this formaldehyde that is formalin 10 percentage formalin and 0.5 percentage sodium tetra borate is used for instruments such as endoscope and dialysis equipments this is liquid form whereas in gaseous form it is used for fumigation of wards corridors icus 
which has very pungent odor and irritating effect on skin and mucous membrane so liquid is used here whereas the gaseous mode is used in fumigating uh, operation theaters icus corridors uh, and other um, wards okay so that is uh, formaldehyde or formalin in gaseous form okay whereas the glutaraldehyde okay it is another type of aldehyde glutaraldehyde which is also known as cdex you must have heard of it cdex which is two percentage alkaline sodium bicarbonate which is high level disinfectant which especially active against tubercle bacilli fungi and viruses which is less toxic than formaldehyde and it can be safely used to treat uh, corrugated rubber anesthetic tubes face mask uh, metal instruments exposure time should be more than 10 hours that is cdex which is glutaraldehyde okay this is less toxic than the formaldehyde one so cdex is glutaraldehyde now we have phenols so phenols is a different one different group which acts by cell membrane damage thus releasing cell contents and causing lysis the cresol cresol that is commonly in brand name lysol and uh, chlorhexidine which is savlon chlorhexidine phenol which is savlon and chloro xylenol okay this is the most common chlor xylenol which is detol okay so we have heard of lysol savlon detol all these are phenols which acts by cell membrane damage and releasing cell content and causing lysis which has uh, basically uh, found in uh, mouthwashes uh scrub soaps and surface disinfectants which has very low uh, efficient in disinfection used for decontamination of hospital environment including the laboratory surfaces and non critical medical items that is about phenols uh, now we have halogens halogens uh, are chlorine compound okay so chlorine compound a uh, chlorine compound most common one is you know bleaching powder right bleaching powder or hypochlorite solution bleaching powder or hypochlorite solution most used uh, disinfectant for hiv infected material the concentration is 0.05 or 0.5 percentage for surface material and instrument disinfection it should be prepared daily because of inst instability of the sodium hypochlorite solution so they are active against bacteria spores fungi and viruses next we have iodophores and iodine okay so they are also halogen family that is iodine and iodophores iodine and iodophores they are active against bacteria spores and virus and fungi suitable for skin preparation mouthwash and surgical scrub most common one is betadine okay this is used in post surgical uh, disinfection it is 7.5 percentage povidone and iodine Okay, povidone and iodine is known as betadine. Okay, so betadine is very important one, which is seven point five percentage povidone and iodine. Now we have uh, gaseous one that is ethylene oxide. Ethylene oxide is highly inflammable, and in concentration more than three percentage is highly explosive. Hence, not used for fumigation of rooms. mix with a uh, carbon dioxide or nitrogen to eliminate its explosive tendency so this ethylene oxide will be mixed with carbon dioxide and nitrogen 
to eliminate its explosive tendency. So this ethylene oxide it will be mixed with carbon dioxide and nitrogen gas to remove its explosive capacity. And how does it work? This uh, principle is basic alkylation of amino, carboxyl, hydroxyl and sulfhydryl groups in protein molecules. It is very effective against all types of microorganisms includes virus and spores. But thing is it should be mixed with carbon dioxide and nitrogen. And mm, now we have uh, the plasma. Plasma is any gas which consists of electrons, ions, electrons, ions or neutral particles. It is used along with chemical disinfectant like hydrogen peroxide. So what are the basic concentration of uh, these uh, liquids such as uh, ethyl alcohol, glutaraldehyde, lysol. So the percentage is for ethyl alcohol we learned it is 70 percentage glutaraldehyde it is 2 percentage Savillon it is 2.5 percentage and Lysol also sorry Savillon is uh, 2 percentage 2 or 5 percentage Lysol is 2.5 percentage Dettol is 4 percentage and bleaching powder we commonly use uh, 15 grams in 1 liter of water sodium hypochlorate it's 0.1 percentage or 1 percentage and betadine is 2 percentage Now we have learned all the methods of sterilization and disinfection uh, in detail. Now we need to learn about the instruments. Okay, so instruments are basically categorized as critical instruments, semi-critical, and non-critical instruments. Critical instruments uh, they are penetrating the soft tissues, contacting the bone, or enter into or contact the bloodstream, and they should be thoroughly cleaned and heat sterilized if they are to be reused such as surgical instrument okay surgical instrument which are coming in with blood bone and tissues uh, scalers we used for uh, scaling in periodontics and scissors which cutting for tissues and scalpel blades scalpel blades and dental burrs used in uh, endodontics and forceps various forceps used in extraction all comes under critical items okay so this should be sterilized this should be heat sterilized if it needs to be reused it is very very important because it it will be containing pathogens okay so heat, heat sterilization or sterilization autoclave methods is very important for critical whereas the semi-critical items which contact the mucous membrane but will not penetrate the soft tissue such as uh, mouth mirror is a semi-critical item then impression trays we use to take impression in prosthodontics and hand pieces various hand pieces micromotor aerotor and probe and tweezers all are diagnostic instruments so these are semi-critical items which can be uh, go for a high level disinfection or sterilization Okay, high level disinfection or sterilization this is sterilization compulsory sterilization okay this is high level disinfection or sterilization whereas the non-critical items comes into contact with intact skin like x-ray tubes x-ray tubes uh, light handles uh, light handles such things are non-critical items uh, just uh, low level disinfection is required okay so these are the basic instruments critical semi-critical and non-critical based on the type of uh, category we need sterilization high level disinfection and low level disinfection okay it is very important the types of instruments 
so that's all about sterilization and disinfection we have covered uh, in detail about the various methods why it is very important in healthcare people because uh, we the dental healthcare providers so we need to follow very high standards of infection control not just for the safety of patient but also for the safety of dental healthcare workers it is easily transmissible to the healthcare providers also so it is very uh, important to keep a very high standards of uh, sterilization and disinfection and we should always give emphasis uh, on the monitoring of uh, the efficiency of all the instruments and uh, cross contamination is also very much uh, vital nowadays uh, that's why uh, the disposable instruments are uh, into practice but still the waste management also is a big concern uh, proper waste management is an another issue so waste management we have already covered uh, solid waste management and uh, hospital waste management so that's all about sterilization and disinfection it's very important chapter uh, the, the you can expect a lot of questions maybe uh, as a essay question short essay question or a short note but uh, more than uh, the exam purpose it is very much uh, vital for your practice in uh, when you're going for a practice it is very much important you need to follow all the principles of sterilization and uh, high standard keeping a high standard uh, not just to prevent the spread of disease to your patients and also to the people who are working inside the clinic or hospital so it is a mutual benefit so if you keeping a very good sterilization and disinfection protocol it is beneficial to the healthcare workers and the patients so i'll come up with a new topic in uh, microbiology thank you